transformers real fast. Transformers are not any more difficult than a pie calculation. They're fairly simple. If you have a transformer question, it doesn't matter how, uh, delta, y, whatever, none of that makes any difference, okay? That the particular type of winding that a transformer is doesn't change the math behind a transformer. The math is constant. There's two charts that we use, or two tables that we use to size over current protection for a transformer that's under 450.3 uh, A and B. So when you're dealing with transformer, yesterday I told you that every single place in the code book except for one spot, 600 volts or less comes first and greater than 600 volts comes next. It's the only spot that doesn't, uh, doesn't stay true. The very first table on the top, table A, is for transformers rated over 600 volts. Okay. The one below that, the smaller one, is the one for transformers rated under or 600 volts or less. Now. So it's really simple. Let's say that we had a transformer that was a 75 kVA. Anytime you're dealing with a transformer calculation, for me, it's easier just to visualize that, to visualize that as a pi calculation. P over I times E. That's all it is. It's the same thing as if we were doing a dryer or any other appliance. It's just this P can be substituted for VA just as easily as it can be substituted for watts. Same calculation though, same basic principles. We have a value up here that's the product of these two down here. And furthermore, with a transformer, the KVA rating on the primary is exactly the same on the secondary. So a 75 KVA is a 75 KVA, no matter how you look at it. Now, the truth is, in reality, you know, with efficiencies and eddy current losses and some copper losses and stuff like that, they're not quite 100%, but for test purposes, calculation purposes, close enough. So 75 on the primary, 75 on the secondary. You can always take that as a given. All right, so you could write that as pi equals pi, right? Any transformer can always be looked at as pi equals pi. So there's never any way that they could throw a question at you that you couldn't figure out a way to solve it as long as you had at least two on one side. That's it. Once you have those two on, one, on that one side, you can figure the third one, you can carry it over and perform whatever you need on the other side too. <coughs> so if I told you this was a 75 kVA that had a three phase 480 volt primary, and it was a 240 volt, let's make it 208 volt secondary. Both secondary, okay? And I ask you, what is the ampacity on the primary and the secondary? You have everything you need to solve that. Don't forget, three phase calculations have what? 1.73. So what is the primary then amperage? And what is the secondary amperage? We know the P value on both sides. You know the E value on both sides. And then all you have to do is do the math. And I can dress that question up and make it so confusing that you wouldn't even know what I'm talking about. But the bottom line is it's pi equals pi. That's all it is. So if you get a transformer question on the test, take a deep breath, get your scratch paper out, draw out pi on it, and then just start plugging stuff in. Don't let, them, don't let them switch. <clears throat> so the math then, 480 times 1.73 comes out to 830. Divided into 75,000 gives me what? 90.36. So we just call it 90 amps, drop it the top, right? Anything on the top. And then on secondary, it's the same steps. I have 208 times 1.73, which is 360, or 359.8, close enough. So 360 into 75,000 is what?
uh, example. All right. Now, let's say that we had the same question, and now I'm asking you, what size breaker would you put to protect the primary with primary only protection? So if you look at that chart down at the bottom. We are under 600 volts on this transformer, it's 480 volt rated. So we would be in the second bottom table down there under B, right down here. And we are, primary protection is that first grid there with the first three columns. And we are at currents of nine amps or greater, so we're definitely gonna be in this first row here. So we're simply gonna take the primary amperage times 125%. So 90 times 1.25 would be what? 112.5. Now, do I round up or do I round down? Down. It says C note one right beside that, right? And note one tells you at the bottom, yep. round up. That's right. Note one, anytime you see note one on a transformer over current protection, is an instruction to round up. It's not, a, it's not an exception. So in this case, if you see that, you would automatically round up. Okay? <laughs> So we put that on a 125 amp break. Yeah. They make it 125? Yep. They do. Make sense? Well, you can't do it like times one Straight from the tape. Yeah. 430 about uh, three. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, 40. <laughs> I'm saying 40. Well, that's the secondary amperage. If they were gonna, if you were gonna deal with secondary protection, then you may have to. But generally speaking, we do primary only protection. That's just way. It, it's easy, but it's real easy to confuse you in a test question with a lot of wording. It's not really relevant. I mean, it is important because it does describe the transformer and the windings and the application, but as far as the application and size of the breaker, you don't need it. Doesn't matter whether it's a delta or a Y or open delta or uh, open delta ground and secondary. I mean, it could, I mean we could describe a, a pretty complicated transformer. All it boils down to is a pi calculation. Yeah. I equals five.